Miss Percival, you say for the past 31 years your father has never been willing to accept you as his biological daughter. Correct, Your Honor. Now, Mr. Hanson, you claim you did not sleep with Miss Percival's mother at the time she was conceived, and there is no way she is your daughter. That's right, Your Honor. She's not my daughter. Additionally, there is yet another young woman waiting outside of the courtroom claiming Mr. Hanson is her father. She will be joining us shortly, accompanied by her mother. So, Miss mm -hmm. Percival, yes, please um, share with the court mm -hmm. why you feel Mr. Hansen has rejected you. I feel that he has rejected me since, well, my whole life I've grown up not knowing who my father was, knowing that my sister, who was a, also through my mother, who is Michael's daughter, he accepted her when she was a baby, but denied me the whole entire time. Mm -hmm. So I grew up my whole entire life not knowing who my father was because he refused to take a DNA test. Mr. Hansen, what I'm trying to understand is you have one child yes. with her mother. Why is it you deny her? So I was much? married with another woman at the time. There's no way. Me and the other woman that I was in a relationship with was having a baby. And I don't cheat. Oh, when I'm yeah. with somebody, <laughs> I stay with somebody. I just got out of a 20 year marriage. I was with the woman 20 years, never cheated on her. You're in a marriage. Yes. And you say you never cheated on your wife. Yeah, that's right. And your wife gave birth within a month of the time that Miss Percival was born. I was with the other woman at the time she was conceived. So there's no way she could be my daughter. I am not her father, Your Honor. And you seem pretty <laughs> confident about that. I guarantee it. So, Miss Percival? Yes, Your Honor. When were you told that he was your father? When I was six years old. At six years old. Yes, ma'am. And from that point on, you had in your mind, this is your father. Mm -hmm. But he's never established a real relationship with you. No, I barely met him personally two months ago at Teresa's house. My other daughter, <laughs> which she's, that's a 50-50 chance too. That's a different story. Whoa. So we're gonna get to that story in a moment. That's right. proven right there that you were a cheater. I don't have a baby. She's the one that had the baby. She's the but one that you cheated were still on me. a cheater because you were with both women at the same time. No, I wasn't. All right. Ma'am, please step up to the podium. I'd like to hear from you. State your name for the court. Charlene Viapondo. <clears throat> okay, Ms. Viapondo, why is it that Mr. Hansen doubts so strongly that he's the father? I'm not sure why he doubts it because of the simple fact I was with him and I told him, or we kept no. going back and forth. We were seeing each other back and forth. And then uh, I had met somebody too, and I was sleeping with him. And then he was going back and forth to Tracy and, then your and Honor, me. The day that I met him, what he told me was, there is no way I can be your father. When I asked him for the DNA test, he said, because your mother was a whore and sleeping with somebody else in the back seat of a car in Chesterfield. No, this is that how That is it, what you said. This is how it is. That After is what you said. Let me ask you, were you intimate with Mr. Hansen while he was with his wife? Yes. If they were married at that time, yes, because we were seeing each other off and on, and then no. he went back to Tracy. No. And his contention is, is, is that he was married and he never cheated. I'll take a lie detector test. I would never no. cheat on Tracy, ever. And given the fact that your daughters are one month apart, it's your contention that he, in fact, was going yes. back and forth. Correct, yes. Your Honor. No. And he is the father. That's a lie. That's a lie. I was never with her after Ms. we split up after our first daughter was born. Miss after... Percival, let me ask you. Did you know Mr. Hansen growing up? No, ma'am. He wasn't even in my sister Jessica's life. He took off. No, I didn't take off. No, oh, yes, I was refused did. to see my daughter. No, you refused but yourself. But I never got to, I didn't even know she was even around until she was like 12 or 13 years old. I didn't even know she existed. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, liar. that was okay, yeah, through my other no, brother that no, I even knew no, that she was no. around. Yeah, I don't want to hear no. that. No, hold on. You're saying, Mr. Hansen, that you never even knew Miss Percival was born until she exactly. was 13 or 14 years old? Exactly. But and were you clear with him when you were pregnant, this is your child? Yes, I did tell him, and he told me no, I wasn't. That, that she wasn't. don't even look like me. Come on, look. I look like Jessica, and I look like Teresa. And Jessica, for sure, is your kid? Yeah, Jessica's okay, mine, yeah. Okay, and we, we look mine. identical. No, you guys don't. Oh, yes, no, we do. Did we you are... ever ask him for a DNA test? No, because I never seen him around. Oh. I asked him the first he was day that gone. I saw him. Oh, come on. <laughs> Charlene, quit lying. Damn, lying. drama queen. We were separated, that was the end of it.
That was the So you're end saying of it. after um, she gave birth to Jessica, the daughter you say is yours. Correct. You never slept together again. I wasn't even around her. I don't even know where she's getting mm -hmm. this. When you first met Miss Percival and you were told this was your daughter, you first laid eyes on her. What did you think? Did you think she looked like you? No. I know she wasn't mine. I I I know. She looks more like a guy that she took a ride in a van with. Oh yeah. <laughs> Mr. Hansen, I think I need to meet your ex-wife. Yes, indeed. And the daughter she yes. had. Okay. Who's within one month of Miss Percival. Yes, ma'am. Please, Mr. Hanson, come sit up here next to me. And Jerome, could you please escort <laughs> Miss Hanson and Miss Merchant into the courtroom? Hello, ladies, come on. Really? Are you serious? Hold on one second. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. Hello, ladies, come on. We're gonna have you go to the podium on the left here. Really? Are you serious? Yes, I'm serious. I can't wait for the child support. Huh? <laughs> Hold on one second before you say what you have to say. State your name for the court. Tracy, Tracy Merchant. You're Ms. Merchant, and your name? I'm Tracy Hansen. All right, so Ms. Merchant, you were married to Mr. Hansen. Yes. At the time <laughs> that Ms. Percival was conceived. Yes, I knew that she was born. I knew she was his when she was born. You did? Yes, I did. No, that's a Yes, lie. I did. I was with you. How could I be with you? And her. No, I was not. Yeah, you no, were. No, I wasn't. So. No way. Ms. Viapondo just stated that she knew you existed yes. and knew he was running back and forth to you, and now you're stating to this court that you knew she existed yes. and that he was running back and forth. Yeah, that's how these <laughs> girls are 28 days apart. No, no, that's a lie. So you that's knew he was cheating on you? I oh, never yeah. once cheated on her. Never. Oh. No, you <laughs> cheated on robot. me. So, Mr. Hansen. Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> You're also denying that Miss Hansen is your daughter. 50-50 chance. Yeah, no, no, my, no, no. My wife he, cheated on me while we were married with my honor. older brother. Hold on, let's get some order, let's get some order. And I didn't even find this out until five years after we were divorced that rumors were going around that she'd slept with my brother. I confronted my brother and he told me yes, he did. Your brother's oh, a liar Honor. just like you are. Your Honor, growing up with him, well, he was in and out of my life, but the times that I was around him, it was your mom's a whore, you're a whore, and I... I didn't call you a yes, whore. Yes, you did, numerous times. No, I didn't. <laughs> you're gonna be like your mom. What kind of man does that? I didn't do that, no. I didn't call her no whore. Yeah. Her mother's one thing. No, I lived with her for three. My mother a whore. He he's never denied any of my brothers. Ever. He's always taken care of them. And I just always felt like I was never worth having a father. And I should have never felt like that. No, you should never have felt like that. I I've treated her so good. Why is this young woman standing in this courtroom her. so upset? Then I'm co I'm close to her right now. <laughs> I go over there all the time to her house. The past I'm year close to my house. grandkids. He's 31. Yeah, 31. I know. How long did it take to find Not you? You months. were married five times. So? Where were you moving? All over the state. No. Everywhere else. I didn't know where you were. Miss Hansen, when you grew up, you knew this was your father, and he never said he denied you were his child. You just felt like he didn't treat you. No, he he, he did tell me that he thought that, or that my uncle or somebody in the family was my biological father. Could when did be. he tell you this? Could be, um, I said. Probably around 11. When you were 11. 11? So you grew up not knowing if your father, the person you thought was your father, or your uncle, uh, yeah. was your biological father. Yeah. So you grew up not knowing if your father, the person you thought was your father, or your uncle, yeah. was your biological father. I was brought up with him telling me bad stuff about my mom, and I never thought that was fair. But my mom would never say anything bad about my dad. She just never really said anything except for that he was my father. And I apologize for saying the bad things about you. That was wrong of me. I never should have done it around the children. 
still do it. No, I you don't. You still tell her no, I'm a whore. You the still only thing talk we're dealing with her. is what we're dealing with now. That's not fair for me. Because as you stand here today, right in this moment, you truly don't know who your father is. No matter I hear what, one thing honest. and I hear another. So, I mean, they're both, as far as I'm concerned, he's my father, so it's both of my parents. I just feel, I feel stuck right now because I don't know. But no matter what. I need answers. No matter what, she's going to be I my daughter, answers. no matter the outcome. No matter the outcome. If she's my daughter, I'll take full responsibility. But I have a real big doubt. And I don't, I don't mean to make you feel bad in anything, in any way. I'm not that kind of person. I would put you in my life. I, we'll if have, you're not that kind of person and didn't want to make me feel bad, why would you say what you did? I told you, because there's no way. You. I know for a fact you're not but my... But why would you say that to somebody? Because I know for a fact you're not my daughter. Your Honor, Your Honor, I have evidence of our birth. Oh, hold on. I'd like to see that. Yes, Jerome, I am. please hand me that evidence, please. <laughs> there you go, Your Honor. Thank you. I, I know for a fact you're not my daughter. You submitted a calendar. In this calendar, you've outlined the dates that Mr. Hansen and your mom were together, were intimate. Yes, ma'am. And you were born on May 14th, so outlined in pink are the dates he would have been with your mom. Correct. And you were born May 14th. One month later, in June, Teresa Hansen was born. Correct. Correct. Therefore, one month later, Mr. Hansen was still with his wife, at the time, Ms. Merchant. Correct. Right. Correct. And so, <clears throat> Mr. Hansen, as you look at this calendar... I'm looking. But that's incorrect. I was with Tracy at the time. I, I was never with Miss Percival at, at that time. I was with Tracy. But you do admit that you had a sexual relationship with Miss Viapondo. Yeah, uh, a couple years before that. Because there's no way I was with Tracy at the time. Your Honor, I, I'm 31 years old. I have seven kids. I've been having kids half my life. My oldest is 15. My youngest is six months, seven months. I went to older guys looking for the void Your Honor, I that my mother never gave me. So not having a father in your life, it affected you tremendously. Tremendous. It affected the choices you made in relationships. Yeah. But it wasn't I did truly all my to fault. to cover up the pain, to fill the, the holes that I had in my life. It wasn't. All my fault. No, it's not. But these are the, th the way that I've had to, to deal with the things in my life oh, and to that. cover up the pain and hurt. And that you not being there has affected me more than you know. I know that. I covered I up. That. But, uh, Your Honor, I resent him the same way because I went through the same thing and I tried to fill the voids in my life the same way, going to older men because I did not have a father in my life also. I also have a 16-year-old. I had my son when I was 16 years old. He's almost 16 now. And I have a four-year-old daughter. So I went through the same resentment. I have resentment so much towards him for not having a father figure in my life and him denying me for 31 years. It was the worst growing up like that. See, it was they're the saying worst. Den I'm denying him. You are denying him. I'm you not are. denying him that's if I can't find him. That, no, 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 no. Mr. Wrong. Hansen, don't sit up here on this witness stand and start backtracking. Because when you stood over there, you said, I do not believe Miss Percival is my daughter. And yeah. I know it for sure. And yeah. then you looked at Miss Hansen and said, there's a 50-50 chance that she's my daughter, and I have doubts. It could be my brother. That's what you told this court. Correct. You've got to own this moment. I am. I'm owning it with Teresa. Her, she's, I, I feel she's more mine. I got more of a connection and, you know, with her than I do with her. Let's just get the test out, and we'll prove it. Well, I think it is time. Yeah, I, I do, hear too. That's going to show up. Jerome. Thank you. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. As it relates to Ms. Hansen and whether you 
Mr. Hansen, or your brother is her father. This is the one I'm worried about. When it comes to the paternity of Ms. Hansen, Mr. Hansen, you are her father. No, 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 yeah. I told you. I love you, too. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. You're most certainly welcome. You seem relieved, Mr. Hanson. Yes, that's the only one I was worried about. I apologize, I don't mean to be inconsiderate or, or ruthless, but I know the other one's not my daughter, I'm sorry. Let's go to the final result. Mr. Hanson. When it comes to the paternity of Ms. Percival, Mr. Hansen. Yes. You are her father. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I didn't. It didn't, it didn't seem like it added up. Thank you. It's just like it just didn't add up, Your Honor. You know what's gonna add and up? I'm sorry. Child support. Child support. Child support. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine with me. I wasn't wrong. I love you both. I'm sorry, I really am. Mr. Hansen, yeah, sure. is there anything you I want apologize. to say to your beautiful I'm little sorry. girls? Really Grown I'm girls. Sorry. I'll be in your life from here for the rest of my life. Yeah. I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll be in her life. With that said, court is adjourned. Take Thank care, everyone. You. Right. Thank you. Ms. Diaz, yes, Your Honor. you have petitioned the court for the results of a DNA test, but you claim your adoptive mother, Ms. Mendoza, is trying to stop you from discovering the truth. Yes, Your Honor. Now, Mrs. Mendoza, you state you doubt whether your adopted daughter has actually found her biological family. Uh, you say you fear today's results will just leave her heartbroken. Correct, Your Honor. So, Ms. Diaz, if it upsets your mother this much, explain why it's important. Your Honor, it's important because all my life, I never fit in. And I always felt like the outcast simply because the neighborhood we grew up in was predominantly Mexican. They picked on me for my skin color, the texture of my hair. And not only that, I had a stepbrother who would pick on me all the time. And uh, he pointed out to me one day that I was adopted. So I went and I asked my mom, Mrs. Mendoza, if it was true. She said that it was. I mean, it was a big blow to take and I always had answers, always felt incomplete. So you adopted her when she was young? Correct. Yes, Your Honor. And in your mind, you saved her life. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Please explain. When I was 20 years old, I was <clears throat> told that I was not ever going to have children. The opportunity arose for me to be able to raise a child. One of my ex-husband's best friends came and told us that he had gotten his mistress uh, pregnant. And she didn't want, he didn't want anything to do with the child, and neither did the, her biological mother. So I met with her biological mother. 
she came to live with us. We came to the agreement that I was to raise this child. I was going to uh, love her unconditional. She was my, going to be my child. And it's just, <sighs> it's heartbreaking, Your Honor, because I've done everything that I have for Leah Selda. I doubt that her mother even knows who her biological father is. I've been through this with her plenty of times. Her mother had an a extramarital affair. And I don't believe Carl Honeycutt Sr. is the father because at the same time, I also heard that she had slept with several other men. I know you took her back at, to meet her biological mother at some yes, point. How did that come to be? When, when Leah Selda was about to turn 15, I had come to her and approached her and told her that it was time to start making preparations for her quinceanera, which is like a coming out party from transitioning from a, a child know. to a, yes. a woman. Well, I was devastated when she told me that she didn't want a quinceanera, that what she wanted for her 15th birthday was to meet her biological mother. Your Honor, I mean, I've looked at it from both sides, but more so mine because my mother obviously knows her parents. I never got that chance, and that's all I've ever wanted. I've always wanted to feel that bond. I feel a, a bond with her because she's always been there for me. But I also have the right to know who my real family is as well. You know? That's all I want. Yes. I'm not trying to hurt her in any way. I have to acknowledge two things at this point. First, that you most certainly have the right to know. And then I must acknowledge that Ms. Mendoza, you, your husband, your family, you have been such a beautiful gift to Ms. Diaz. And that should never be underestimated. They were your parents. Right. And they are your parents. Yes, they are. Now, after meeting your biological mother, you went on to search for your biological father. Um, back in 2001, I put an ad out searching for my biological father. Um, I didn't get a response right away until July of 2013. And the one who replied was Carnell Honeycutt Jr. And he told me that um, he felt like we were related that we may share the same father. Now, did you talk to your mother, Mrs. Mendoza, about this? Definitely. I mean, I called her right away. And what was your response, ma'am? How did you feel about... I'm happy in a way that she's, she's always wanted to know who her father was. And I don't want to deny her that. My fear, Your Honor, is that once she does find out that this Carl, uh, Carnell Honeycutt Sr. is her father, that she's just going to push me aside. I've been there for her. I've done everything for her. I don't know what else she wants from me. I've sacrificed everything for her. But, Ms. Mendoza, you have to understand that finding out who her biological father is in no way supersedes or replaces all the love and support and shelter and the life you gave her. Is there a part of you that wants to shield your daughter from disappointment if this doesn't turn out the way yes, she Honor. wants it to. Yes. In my mind, I know this is the right thing for her to do, to, and it's instinctive for her to know her, her roots. But my heart just can't open up and let her live through that disappointment again. I appreciate everything that you've ever done for me. Don't get that wrong. It's just, it's hard to explain to strangers that you're my mom. And with them going along and saying, oh, well, you don't look like her, or you don't look like your brothers or your sisters, it's hard. But Lisa, the blood doesn't make you family. I know it doesn't, but I still have the right to know. I still have the right to know. Since you started corresponding with your potential biological brother, do you feel a connection? Is there? Yes, Your Honor, there is a connection. I mean, it's something I've always wanted to feel you know, with someone that I favor, you know, it's, it's a good you feeling. You think you look alike? I, I feel that we do. And every time we talk, I'm But you've never met in person? No, just pictures. Jerome, I think it's time that we meet Mr. Honeycutt. 
Please escort him into the courtroom. We're going to go up to the witness stand next to the judge. Hello, sir. Hello. Thank you for joining us today. No problem. So we are here discussing the paternity of Ms. Diaz and her search to find her paternal family. How did you connect with her? You saw her ad. I was talking to my dad, and um, I was asking him, you know, if he would ever have any more kids. And he was like, no, no, man. I, I, honestly, I possibly have another child out there. I was like, oh, really? He was like, yeah, uh, you know, this girl I used to date way back, you know, she gave this baby up for adoption and never got to, you know, s see it because he didn't know if it was a girl or boy. And so um, he gave me the name of the woman. And so I looked her up and I saw an Ancestry.com ad and it said, looking for my father. And I saw Leah Zelda as a name. I got the name and found her on Facebook. Really? Yep. So you having a father-son talk yeah. with your dad and threw that question out there and he tells you that you may have a sibling. Sibling out so there. So he did indicate that this child would be of Mexican heritage. Mm -hmm. You were looking for her as she was looking for you all. Yeah, and um, the Ancestry.com message was way back in 2000 or 2001. So it was really? that long ago, And yeah. then you looked her name up on Facebook. Yep. You get her to respond. You see this message? Actually, from... it was a phone call. My uncle had called her because I was too nervous to call her. You know, I didn't know how to approach, you know. And then, you know, I kind of reached out through text message, so. And your father is currently incarcerated, am I correct? Yeah. Did you tell him this was going on that you'd reached yeah. out? I told him and he was, um, he was like, he was excited, but he was really uh, upset, disappointed at, you know, the, in the woman that he was with at the time. He was really mad because he was like, you know, I would have known this, you know, I would have taken care of my own child. So as you both begin to compare family histories, what have you, you felt like you had found each other, that this man was in fact both of your father. Yeah. Yes, Your Honor. Now, Ms. Diaz, when you got this message and they called you, what were you thinking? Honestly, at first I thought it was a scam. And then the more questions that they started to ask, you know, I felt, well, mainly, maybe this is this What kind is of it. questions were they asking? <sighs> they just asked if I knew anything about my biological father. Um, and what did you say? I said, I really don't know much. I mean, I thought one person was, and it turned out that that wasn't the person. And then when he threw the name out there, I said, well, now that I think about it, I did hear that name, but I never thought to look for him. Okay. Ms. Mendoza, did she tell you that Mr. Honeycutt and his family had reached out to her? Yes, ma'am, she did. When she threw out these names, did you, in your mind, remember anything from the past that this could potentially be the guy? No, ma'am, because the biological mother refused to give me any information on who the, the father could have been. Mr. Honeycutt, what did your father say? Um, I have a message. I have a letter, actually. I'm he wrote a letter? I'm read a little piece of it. Um, it says, Dearest daughter, I'm happy that you almost have closure to the unanswered questions you wanted for so long. The photos I received of you clearly shows that you have the Honeycutt genes. In my heart, I always knew I had a child out there but could not prove it. I don't need a DNA test to know. You're my daughter and I just know it. I, I, you know, I really believe, you know, she looks like a lot of uh, family members of mine. And I actually, I don't have the picture on me, but I have a picture that looks, you know, just like her when I was a child, so. When you were small? Yeah, when I was small. You feel like you resemble? Yeah, we resemble. Ms. Diaz, you are emotional, I understand. This is so very, emotional for you. Can you put into words what you're feeling? I mean, if, if the test comes out positive, I'm gonna be happy. I mean, it's been a long 30 years not knowing. And I feel bad at times because I don't, I didn't want to hurt anybody doing this. It's just I have to know. 
I have to know so I can move on. I have to know so I can put this behind me. And you do understand your mother's fear for you. That yes. she's scared for you. She's scared if it doesn't work out the way you want, how will you handle it? Because you said, I've been through this before and it didn't turn out to be the person I want it to be. It didn't turn out to be my father. Right. I'm gonna stop. I can't continue to hurt her or myself. Yeah. I mean, it's too much. Ms. Mendoza, you brought your husband to court. Can you please stand, sir? Yes. Mr. Mendoza, thank you so much for coming. What are your thoughts on this situation, sir? Well, it kind of makes me angry because uh, we've, been, uh, we've been there for her, her, for her all this time, and especially it upsets my wife. I just wanted to quit because every time she does that, it hurts my wife a lot. And not only that, it hurts the other kids that we got. And every time it doesn't come out the way she wanted, it hurts her too. I just want this to stop because it makes my wife upset. And it, it hurts me and it hurts the whole family. And I do understand your position. However, you also understand the fact that this is something that eats away at your daughter, something that she yeah. thinks about day in and day out. Yeah. And this is an issue yeah. that she alone in your family has to deal with. And sometimes, I think as parents, we forget that we work hard all of our lives to raise our children to be beautiful, smart, intelligent people. We then can't yep. fault them yeah. when they want the answers to yeah. the difficult questions. Yeah. And they're not afraid to seek those answers. And it has nothing to do with their love for us, her love for you, but everything to do with the love she has for herself, and you have instilled that in her. So that is a testament to you all. I think at this point, we all are ready to learn the results. You agree? <laughs> Jerome, the envelope, please. Here you go, Your Honor. Thank you. Based on the DNA results to establish whether Leaselda Diaz and Carnell Honeycutt are related as siblings, the probability of siblingship is 0.6%, which means they do not share biological parents and are not siblings. This is exactly what I was scared of, Your Honor. Been through this with her many times. She just needs to stop. She's with the family that loves her. Will always be there for her. I don't know what else to do. Miss <laughs> Diaz? I'm done. I have my parents right there. Always be here for her. Always. I've been there from day one. I will be there until I die. She's my daughter. She's my firstborn. Blood doesn't make you family. Well, as I said before, you raised her to be a beautiful, intelligent, strong young woman. And I personally commend you, Ms. Diaz, for being strong enough to continue this search despite the disappointment. And if you ever are in need of this courtroom, again, we will be here for you. you. And until <clears throat> that time, I hope you do love and appreciate these two beautiful people who love you so very much. I wish you the best of luck. Court is adjourned.